All right, one of the questions I get all the time is, what's a good general deck? I don't want to think too hard about it. I just want a deck that always works in any scenario. Gimme. So that's what we're going to do today. This deck works for me in every scenario, any act. I could do it with my friends or I could do it with randoms. It always does well, no matter what. And we're going to talk about why the deck looks the way it looks. And I want to explain a little bit more as to how you can make it your own. Because a lot of times when I share decks, I think, I think people <laughs> kind of miss the point. And they focus a little bit on things that don't matter. And I want to kind of try to smooth some of that out so you can, again, work for yourself and make things work for you so you can have a, a nice, malleable experience that works no matter what's going on in front of you. Okay? So, the whole point of this deck, how it works, is I got two weapons and I'm using them constantly. It's a swap deck, basically. And the thing that makes that work the best, in my opinion, is Knowledge is Power and then Admin Reload. So Knowledge is Power makes it so you get that little red bar above mutations, and it lets you know how much health they have. This is critical. It is non-negotiable for the way that I play the game. Reason being is that it lets you position properly. If you know that something still has a lot of health, that gives you time to back up, or it lets you know you need to back up. If you know something doesn't have a lot of health left and that you can hit it down with one or two more shots, that keeps you from wasting time and wasting resources or wasting space or making it so that somebody else on your team gets hit while you were busy bailing. Knowledge's power does so much to just let you have control of the game. It is, in the, with the way I play, one of the best cards in the game. And now let me show you the other card in the deck that I think is kind of non-negotiable. You need to have it no matter what for this whole idea to work. And that card is called Admin Reload. So what it does is when you stow your weapon, it reloads. If you don't know what that means, that means if I shoot, 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 and then I switch my weapon, take a look at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that the ranch rifle is going to reload itself. And you hear that little t -t 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 -t. So something to know about Admin Reload is that it is affected by reload speed. So if you have other reload speed cards in your deck, which I probably do here at some point, Cold Brew has it, that'll make it so your weapon's reload faster with admin reload so that is something to keep in mind as you're trying to really get this whole swapping thing down so a lot of times what you'll see me do when i'm playing this deck i play this all the time on twitch is i'll have my big barrett shot here and I go bam and then i flip over to this and then my thing's reloading i can shoot for a while and i flip back on over i take a big shot or maybe take two big shots but i'm already reloaded and i just keep going like this this is basically the theme of the deck where you just have a lot of power and you can keep reloading and it just keeps taking care of it for you so you never stop you don't have this really really long period where you go to try to reload the dang gun right and right now you're just a sitting duck i mean what you can do to help a little bit with that is while you're reloading you can punch and then if you look in the bottom right your gun does reload while you're punching this is a feature of the game but this makes it so you can just keep pumping keep pumping keep pumping and then go well, bam then you just keep shooting and then keep swapping back and forth okay so let's move back to the deck and talk about why things are where they are and what matters and yada yada all right so back to the deck here something i really want to drive home with the deck is you do not have to pick this stuff in order. In fact, I would encourage you not to. The way, in my opinion, you should play this game is pick your cards based off of what's happening around you or what's happening in the levels. So, Knowledge is Power is always useful and Admin Reload is always useful for the way I play this, right? But there are things that happen inside of a match that can vary a lot or based off of the act you're in or based off of the cleaner you get the point of the stack is that you can deal with anything at any time doesn't matter what cleaner you have doesn't matter what act you're in but think of those things as you're picking the cards and a really good example of this is if you go into the campaign here i'm gonna go click campaign and i want to create a run if i create a run on act one you know how many cards you get you get two you get your starter card and you get to pick one card on one one all right. now if you're on act two they actually buffed act two and act three i think you get four cards at the beginning and I think with Act 3, you get five cards. So what that does is it drastically changes how you look at your deck and how you pick your cards and what's going on around you. So you can pick your cards after you get to see the corruption cards, okay? Those things that make your life hard like Tattlers or Monstrous This or the Gloom or the Fog or there's a boss. You should be kind of reacting to that. So the order of things doesn't matter. It's more their general placement. So if I go back to the deck here, <laughs> if you're picking one, two, three, four, five, six, I just find that foolish because you have all these cards available. So when you first load into the game, you pick your starter card. That one's non-negotiable, but then you get to see the next five cards. Do you not? So you can pick this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. And then since in Act 3, you get to have five cards to start with. At that point, you're already close to freaking Utility Scavenger on the things that you get to pick. So it doesn't matter what order this stuff is in. 
That's something people get hung up a lot on when I make build videos. They're like, why do you have that all the way down here? I'm like, because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It matters more on Act 1, if that's something you are playing a lot of. But Act 2, Act 3, who cares? Or if you start at a later checkpoint, who cares? It's just as long as it's in there in the general place where you want it. Now, sometimes things are more important, right? So with this deck, I like to have guns out pretty high because I'm swapping constantly, right? And if you're slow to pull your gun out, the whole admin reload thing loses a lot of its luster. So I have it pretty high. I also have two is one and one is none really high. The reason why this is really high is sometimes you just cannot find a good freaking secondary at all. So, like, yeah, I mean, I guess mom right now. I don't mind the Belgian, but it's not great unless you go ahead and juice it up a little bit, right? So if I'm playing mom here, and usually I pick a Dusty's card to go ahead and get a sniper rifle right away because the whole point of how I play this is a sniper and then a supplementary clearing gun. So if I have a sniper and I just cannot find something that's good at clearing, like I can't find a Tech 9 or I can't find a Glock Auto, what I will do in that case is I'll, okay, I guess I'm going to pick two as one and one as none so that I can pick up an ump or I can pick up an AR. Or I can pick up something that is good at clearing. But if I happen to play Carly or if I happen to find a Tech 9 right away or a Glock Auto, there will be games where I have this as my fifth card, but I don't pick it ever. <laughs> I don't even pick it all the way at the last pick of the game. I'll just pick a stamina card instead because this helps a lot if you need it, but if you don't need it, then you don't need it. So that's why it's there. And on that argument, if you play a lot of Carly and you only ever play Carly, you could probably just get rid of this card. Put something else in there. That's where I'm trying to encourage you guys to think a little bit more for yourselves and think about the greater scenario of what's going on. Other reasons why I have cards pretty high in the deck here. If I am going to be playing on Act 1, I want to have superior cardio kind of high if I need to make a run for it on 1-3 or 1-4. And this is high enough that I'm going to be able to get it for 1-3 or 1-4. It'll already be displaying itself. Okay? Or let's say I'm playing an Act 3. Um, what the heck is that level called? If I go into play here, I go into training, click this, go to Act 3. What you'll see here is farther afield. That's the one that has a lot of snitchers on it right away. So you're going to have to deal with those all over the place. But what's a really easy way to deal with them? A lot of damage and a lot of weak spot damage. So what I tend to do in those scenarios is I like to have Patient Hunter high enough. Because again, on Act 3, you start with five cards. So I like to have Patient Hunter high enough. I like to have Hyper Focused high enough. So if I Dusty's in with a burn card here, I usually, again, I almost always use Dusty's for a sniper rifle at the beginning. If I Dusty in a burn card and I get a Barret, well then suddenly for my team, I can one shot the three or four or five snitches that spawn on that level. Okay? I, I'm really encouraging you guys to adapt to what's happening in front of you. And then also, on the topic of, let's say, swap speed. I like to have swap speed, right? Because if things are too slow, it doesn't work out. But if you can get through that first level and you find two swap speeds or there were swap speeds sitting in the vendor, you might not need to pick guns out right away. You might want to pick something else. Maybe you need to run. You want to run Mad Dash. Or maybe Utility Scab is high up enough. Because, again, you're probably on Act 3, 1, or 3, 2. Maybe you want to start boosting your economy. Utility Scab, I just made a video about it, is probably the best or one of the best. I might move this up cards in the game right now from an economy perspective it, it it's it's ridiculous you can go watch that whole video about it. i'm not going to get into it now but again the whole point of this is that it works based off of what you're dealing with i can just make a video and go here's the deck haha here you go have fun but i want the point to be made that make the deck based off of what's generally probably going to happen okay now let's go through a little bit more of the deck so we can just talk through why things are in it. So hyper focus because it does a lot of damage. Well, boom to the weak spot. If your aim's good enough, it's really, really helpful <laughs> against anything, basically. Except for Reekers. And like I said, with Act 3, being able to be the person that can completely solo a snitch, it takes so much pressure off your team. Because people get panicky. They're like, oh god, here it comes. Are we, are we counting? Are we throwing a grenade at it? What, what, what are we doing? Then you just shoot it. It's done. Let your patient hunter stacks get up. With hyper-focused, it's done. You took care of it. Nobody has to panic. And after you set that precedent, they'll start to trust you a little bit more to take care of other stuff, which is huge later in the game. We talked about guns out. We talked about two is one, one is done. Superior cardio, this just makes it so you could run longer. If you need more speed, maybe pick Mad Dash first. But I have found superior cardio to be the superior card in more scenarios because it just lets you keep going. Sprinting is fast enough in most cases. It's when you run out of stamina and you can't sprint anymore, things get a little scary. But Mad Dash does help get you that little bit of extra juice but I would advise picking it after because you just lose a lot of sprint stamina efficiency. 
okay now i just talked about patient hunter just gives you a lot of damage gives you 30 percent damage over what 2.25 seconds so a little bit of time and then you shoot out whatever you need to kill and it's great with the sniper rifle that I usually run. So I usually run sniper rifle and then a clear weapon. Clear weapon is pretty much anything that shoots fast enough to kill a lot of things really fast. That'd be a Tech 9. That could be an assault rifle. That could be a Glock Auto. Heck, it could be a shotgun. But shotguns are a little limiting in their range. Now onto the other cards here. I have Cold Brew Coffee. And maybe I want this card higher. I don't know. I mean, it really depends on who you play. I do like having this card pretty high up here. Like, I'm I'm the kind of person who doesn't really feel like they need a lot of speed. I, <laughs> we did no speed nightmare. We did no card nightmare. So speed isn't really a high priority for me whenever I make a build. So, again, yeah, let's kind of push that up a little bit, right? And then the reason why I like cold brew is it does everything for the build. It makes more reload speed happen. So if I need to admin reload, it makes that a little bit nicer. And reload speed does help with your sniper rifle firing speed, especially on the Phoenix. But you'll see it on the Baird a little bit as well. It also helps on what the tack. In case you want to use the tech. The tech 14 works really well with this build, by the way, too. Aim speed is really nice. If I'm going in and out and swapping in between weapons, and I got to aim down sights really quickly. Weapon swap speed. I mean, that's what this whole thing's about. Use speed is useful all the time, too. Use speed, by the way, does affect your revive speed, in case you're wondering. But it also affects uh, basically everything else. So, use speed's great. And then mad dash. I'm assuming you know what mad dash is. It basically just makes you sprint faster. A little bit of trivia on sprinting. Every single weapon sprints the same speed. Okay? There's an actual value for it. It's 600. So, you can have an LMG, or you could have a Tech 9, you are sprinting the same as X speed. Sprinting. That does not mean walking, or moving side to side. SMGs are going to be more agile, but full out sprint speed, it is the same for every single weapon. If you don't believe me, go try it. <laughs> I have Mark for Death in here because this is a nice card for a few reasons. One, it gives a highlight of a target for your team to focus on. Also, it just makes it so everybody does 10% more damage, so it's just free damage. In case you haven't caught the vibe here, this is all about just lots of damage going out constantly. Because, in all my experience with this game, one of the things I've come to learn is the best defense is a good offense. Frankly, if everybody just ran a lot of bullet damage, you'd probably just cream this game and not have to sweat once. Next, I have ammo belt here, one for the reload speed, but also for the ammo capacity. Honestly, you could go ahead and replace ammo belt here with probably on your mark. Might be something to consider because on your mark is a really nice card right now. It restores ammo, gives move speed while firing. It's just a nice card and it helps your whole team out. So that might be a better pick than ammo belt, but I tend to kind of get in scenarios where I'm kind of clearing everything. So the ammo belt has been really useful for me, but Again, on your mark, I think is a really, really, really close second. And then actually on the topic of really close seconds, we have all these damage cards here at the end. And the reason why I have the damage cards at the end is because, again, I can see these up here if I need them, but you need your most damage at the end of the game. So that's where you have Confident Killer. And Confident Killer happens to be in a really nice spot for Hail to the Worm because then you can go ahead and get a lot of bosses coming in. It also works out with a lot of these levels where a lot of bosses or mutations spawn. Large Cow for more damage, Silver Bullets for more damage. You also get a little bit more effective range, which is nice because I think on a sniper rifle in this patch, the, what is this, the February patch, you have like a 23 meter max range. So that's going to be an extra, I don't know, two and a half meters. It goes up to like 27-ish meters of range, which is amazing. And then after that point is when you start losing a little bit of damage. So max damage for 27 meters. Go, go ahead and ping 27 meters. Here, I'll do it for you. It's pretty far out there. And you're doing max damage with your sniper. Like, it's pretty, yeah, I don't even know exactly where I can nail it here, but it's pretty far out there. Like right here is 20. And let me tell you, that's a pretty safe distance, so... It's, it's a great card just to get you a little bit more out of that. And also, again, if you pick a shotgun, it helps with that as well. Other cards that could be really helpful is Power Swap. I'm really considering putting Power Swap in the deck. I just don't know where I want to put it yet. But basically what it does is changing your weapon within one second of that little low ammo thing that your gun might do. Here, let me see if I can make a pop up for you. Go pop, 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 pop. And, oh, so it says reload. So I think when it says reload, that's his low ammo. And then Power Swap will be able to be activated if you swap within a second of that and since you have admin reload on you're just gonna reload your other gun anyway so this is basically a free 20 percent damage now in my mind where it gets a little tough is where do i want that 20 percent damage because that's a really really big chunk of damage and it doesn't do as much down here right this is nice if you want some novelty on taking out tall boys and stuff or really melt down things really quickly but the most where i'd be power swapping would be one big strong bullet on my sniper rifle and i would want that 20 percent to be in a place where that is going to help me one-shot things because if I still have to shoot something twice. What's the point of power swap? I may as well take the flat damage. So I would ha I have to think about again on a per game basis where would I want this in my deck? But I definitely want to try working it in there. Okay. So again, this is a deck you can go ahead and just copy it if you want, and that'll work for you. Or you can change it up a little bit. I encourage you to. But really, 
really what I wanted to get across in this video is consider what is happening in the match. Consider what guns you found, what attachments you picked up, what cards on the corruption side are getting in your way. And then that's where you really start to define what your character is going to look like. Or heck, what intel cards you found, how much copper you have, what cards spawned on the map for you to buy. All of these things should be affecting your decision making. I really, really, really hope that in case you were the type of person who was just picking one, two, three, four, five, that you try something different and try to investigate a little bit about how you can mix it up and adapt to what's going on in front of you. So I hope this helps. Again, this deck works for me all the time. Some lobbies, you're just not going to get things done because the people just don't know enough about the game yet. They're still learning. But in general, every single night, I'm able to clear an act with randoms with this deck. And hopefully it works for you. Hopefully it inspires some thought for you to adapt to your own play style. And with that, thank you guys. We stream just about every single night. Twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Links in the description and also the top comment down below. And if you found this video helpful or any of the other videos, we are going to be covering a lot of... What the heck is it called? Tunnels of Terror when that comes out on April 12th. That's the first DLC for this game. So make sure you're subscribed for that. And I'll see you guys in the next video that we do around here. Okay. Bye.